So we have been working on our gesture drawings, you guys. And today we're going to introduce something else to the mix. We're gonna start learning about watercolors. And today we're just gonna focus on learning watercolors. And the following class, we're actually gonna learn how to integrate our gesture drawing skills with our watercolor skills. So the next class is when we really start working on our final project. Today we're focusing all about watercolor. And if you're someone who's been absent, then you're also going to look at the makeup work and start practicing your gesture drawing. But um, first of all, let's talk about watercolors. I've had a student say, oh, we've already used watercolors. We use watercolor pencils. That is true, but using a pan watercolor like this is a little bit different. There's a little bit um, more that you can do with it, in my opinion. And we're gonna talk about some of the options that you have for these. Good morning. Um, so we're using Crayola. Um, things like this sometimes it really does matter you want to use a good brand so there's a lot of pigment so you'll see when you open it up you have brown like a um a deep purpley color a blue a green yellow orange red and black okay and these are highly concentrated pigments that are water soluble what does that mean that means that we can take our brush and they each come with a little brush too which is handy so when you use your watercolor set these are brand new you guys Make sure that when you're all done, you clean the brush and put it back in the pan so there's a pan for the next person. So um, you're going to need a thing of water here. And I also have a ruler. A lot of times when we're practicing different techniques in this class, we will like fold our paper into sections. But the thing with watercolor is, is when we get those creases and folds in the paper, it can change the way that the watercolor acts. So rather than fold it into six sections, I'm going to encourage you to just draw six sections on your paper. Um, one, two. They don't have to be like perfect sections, but just kind of, you know, do a little something, something. Okay, that's not even, but that's good enough. All right, so we're gonna be looking at seven, I'm sorry, not six, seven different techniques. So the first technique is wet on wet. And so for wet on wet, I'm gonna do wet on wet right here. I'm gonna label this. Why do you think that I'm using this type of paper rather than doing it in my sketchbook? Yeah, so the, the paper in your sketchbook is much thinner. It's basically like printer paper, it's very thin. Yeah, so one, it'll bleed through, and two, it's, it's um, designed to be like thin and really smooth. And for watercolor, you actually want something that's a little bit rougher. So when you get your paper, you'll notice that one side is a little bit smoother and one side is a little bit rougher. We call that the tooth. You want to um, work on the side with the tooth, the rougher side, um, if possible. Okay, so let's go on to wet on wet. So for wet on wet, the first thing I need to do is actually get my paper wet. So I'm just gonna take just pure water here and put it down on my paper. The cool thing about this is it's kind of like reversible painting. So I can determine what the outlines are going to be and how far my paint is going to bleed. So I'm just putting some wet down. That creates this sort of like really smooth runny look. So now I'm getting more water and I'm gonna pick up my first color. So I'm gonna go for green. I'm a sucker for green and let me show you guys over here. So I put water on my brush and I'm starting to rub it around. Now, the more you rub it around in here, the more pigment you're gonna pick up. I know this is something that kind of sounds obvious, but if you've never used watercolor before, you might not realize it. So if I keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing, I'm gonna get a lot of pigment on my brush. If I just swirl it around a little bit, I'm not gonna get as much pigment, okay? So just be, be weary of that. I got probably a lot of pigment on my brush here. Now watch what happens when I just touch this down. It starts to sort of bleed. And I think I took too long with my explanation because it's already starting to, my paper's already starting to dry. But you get this really loose effect with kind of loose edges. I can get more water and I can get these really, really nice, loose, loose edges, okay? Um, another technique is blending colors. So let's do this again. With blending colors, I'm gonna start with lots of water down and I'll put some green up here and you have to see that's what it was supposed to look like it was kind of supposed to spread I took too long with my talking so see how that sort of started to spread now if I pick up my yellow down here and I make sure that the area between the two stays wet then they'll blend really well because 
um, I don't know if you guys have heard about osmosis in your science class. Osmosis is <clears throat> the water wants to travel to the spot that has less water, right? So if I keep this nice and wet and liquidy, these will blend together super, super nicely. And I can just kind of add water and let it do its thing. Now, one thing that you really need to remember about watercolor is that when it's wet, if you, if I were to like say, oh, I'm gonna go show this to Miss Pearson and see if she thinks it's good and pick it up and take it over to me. This is wet and runny and it's gonna run all over the place and make a mess and look really ugly. So um, if it's wet and you don't like, you're not intentionally trying to make it go this way or that way, you need to leave it flat on the paper, okay? Leave it flat on the, I'm sorry, table. Okay, the next one that we're gonna do is dry brush. I'm not gonna get the paper wet. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a pigment. So let's get a new pigment this time. And I don't have an excessive amount of water on my brush. I'm just picking up as much pigment as I can with kind of a, a semi-dry brush. Now, if I come over here to this dry paper, dry brush kind of occurs when I start to run out of paint. So really, I probably should have like gotten some of this paint off on a separate piece of paper, but I want you to see the difference as it starts to get drier and drier. You see these little streaks here? I need to go to a different section. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I had too much water at the beginning. That's why we really need to practice this. Um, so this is what dry brush looks like. Oop, I can't pick it up because it's going to mess it up. Right here. See how you can see all those streaks of the brush? That is dry brush. And it really starts to look not so much like watercolor, but more like acrylic or something like that. And it has this really painterly sort of sketchy look. So dry brush can be nice for some different expressive features you might want to add or even maybe some hair or something like that. The dry brush would be really good. Another technique that we're going to do is wet on dry. So let's see. I don't really have a good dry section. This, this section is actually kind of dry already. So if I let a section dry and then go back into it with a different color, it won't bleed, okay? If I were to add this blue over here where it's super wet, it's gonna bleed all over the place. But if I do it on a spot that's already dry, then I can get a different technique. When I do the blue over the purple, you actually see the overlap here. The cool thing about watercolors is that they are transparent, meaning see-through, as opposed to like a lot of acrylic paint. If you paint it down, it's gonna be pretty opaque, meaning you cannot see through it. So when I paint it over this purple, you can still kind of see the purple through it and we get this third color here. So it's like blue here, purple here, and bluish purple here. So that is one really cool thing about watercolor to take into consideration. Wet on dry, okay, masking. Masking is kind of a fun one. Masking is where you use a little bit of tape and you don't need a lot, but basically just helps you to get a really, really sharp edge. Um, you can also mask with things like, like glue or wax, um, but just for the sake of, this is just an intro assignment, I'm just gonna use some masking tape. And let's see, let's come in with orange. And I'm just gonna kind of put that down there and we'll let that dry and then we'll peel that up in a minute. Um, the next one is splatter. This is most students' favorite. So for splatter, you're going to um, get your brush semi-dry, a little bit wet, and you're gonna pick up a new color. So I'm gonna get black for this one so it will really show. Black, 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 pick up lots of black on the brush. Then you're gonna put it kind of down near the paper. So we're not like way up high in the air. We're kind of down near the paper. We're gonna take our finger. It's not gonna go everywhere. I have a student kind of pulling back. And we just sort of pull and let it fling. And you get this really cool speckled effect. So this can be a really, really fun thing to play with. Ooh, I just got my water all dirty. Um, and then the last technique I have is to use gravity, which I'm gonna demonstrate with this one right here. So this is still a little bit wet. You can use gravity to pick up your paper 
run your paper different directions, turn your paper, um, and get different types of drips depending on how you're holding your paper. So that is something else you can think about. Um, you may have seen like there's a like, kind of popular art on the internet where there's a bunch of like maybe colors up here. And then you pick it up. Let's see what happens. Now with the gravity one, you don't have a ton of control. So when you do this, you're going to need to be okay with the fact that it may not drip exactly how you want it to drip. And you have to sort of embrace the element of chance here. So you do need to be okay with that if you're gonna use that technique. I don't think my masking worked very well. Let's see. Oh, it actually did. Look at that. So I'm peeling off the tape off my masking. Okay, there we go. So, oh, that bled kind of right there. You gotta make sure your tape, your tape is down really good. Um, so the point of this little sheet of paper is just a little sampler so you can practice and, and get good at the techniques and see what techniques can do what. Um, when you're done with one sampler, like you might say, oh, I wanna practice the dry brushing more or I, I wanna get better at the masking or whatever, you can get another piece of paper and practice some more. So I'm gonna stop the video and then I'm gonna give you guys your actual instructions for today.